In this video, we're going to cover what Survey and Vuil um, talk about in Chapter 1 of their text called Physics about unit conversion. This is a very important thing because, number one, units are very important in physics in general, and number two, we prefer to work in the SI system. Mathematically, it's much easier to work with than the English Imperial or American Standard System. Um, so we, a lot of times, are given units in one system that we need to convert to another one, number one, to make it easier or because it's a class requirement. So as a simple example of that, let me just write down the fact that one meter is equal to 3.28-ish feet. Now, what you might think I've just written down some information about a meter as it relates to feet, and I have, but I've also actually written down an equation. Notice that this is an equation, and I can do all the sorts of uh, algebraic manipulation on this equation than I can with other equations. Uh, if you're confused about how that's going to work out with the units, please see the video on dimensional analysis. But in general, what I can do here is I can divide both sides of this equation by one meter. And then on the left side, of course, this whole thing just goes to 1. Notice that the units cancel, right? Obviously, 1 over 1 is 1, but a meter over a meter is also 1. So my left side has now become dimensionless, and I get this. 1 is equal to 3.28 over 1 feet per meter, right? No big deal. Well, all right, that's fine and good. Well, what I can do with this is I can use the fact that this quantity on the right-hand side is equal to 1 to do some fancy conversions. Mathematicians, or at least the ones that I was taught by, call this the clever one. It's a 1 that doesn't look like a 1. You don't look at 3.28 feet over 1 meter and think, oh, that's just equal to 1. But we've shown here that it is equal to 1. So if I want to convert something, like say I'm given a quantity, um, say that I'm given something like 7 meters and I want to know how much is this in feet well I can take my 7 meters and I can multiply it by the quantity that I just grasped 3.28 over 1 feet per meter notice I can do this because we already decided that this entire quantity here is just 1. And I can multiply anything by 1, right, without actually changing its value. What I am going to do here is change the units. Let me get rid of that line. This is going to be equal to the numbers I can just type into my calculator. 7 times 3.28. That gets me 22.96. But units, look what happens. I've got a meter in the numerator and a meter in the denominator those will cancel and I'm left with just feet. Uh, so I, the answer to my question, 7 meters works out to be approximately 22.96 feet. I did some rounding in the previous step but that's close enough for what we're doing here. So the units will tell you again how to do the uh, the problem that you're, you're working on. Let's do a different example. Let's say I'm given um, 10 feet and I want to know how many meters is this. Well, I can still use the same calculate uh, the, the same conversion factor, but only I'm going to have to invert it. Let me go back to that slide. Clearly, if this if the uh, value of this quantity is just one, if I invert that, in other words, if I write one meter over 3.28 feet, well, the inversion of one is still one. So I haven't actually changed anything. I haven't changed the numerical value of that. Uh, of that expression, I've just inverted it, and then I would have meet or sorry meters over feet. Let me go back to this slide. So what I have there is I need to multiply ten feet by one foot. No, sorry, one meter over three point two eight feet, and the same thing is going to happen. I can do the uh, the mathematical portion pretty easily. 10 divided by 3.28 is equal to about 3.05. Again, I'm doing some rounding. 
and then my feet are going to cancel and I'm left with meters so the answer is 10 feet is equal to 3.05 meters those are unit conversions in between different systems if you're interested in converting units in, in, the, uh, in the SI system, in the metric system well that's really easy, we don't have to go through any of the rigmarole we just did say that I'm given one meter and I'm interested in how many centimeters that is well uh, centimeters, the prefix centa means a hundred I should tell you that this unit, the centimeter uh, contain, or one meter contains a hundred centimeters and so because this is base 10, most of you have already done this a lot in high school so I'm going very briefly uh, because it's base 10 I just end up moving the decimal point. It's not a big deal. So one meter is actually equal to, I just here's my decimal point to begin with, is here. I just move it over two times, and I get 100 centimeters. It's no big deal. If I'm trying to convert one kilometer or a kilometer, it would be the correct way to say it, but everybody says kilometer, so we'll go with it. How many meters is a one kilometer? Well, uh, we know that it's a thousand, so I just move the decimal point, which is here, over three places. Move it one, two, three places. These are very trivial examples, but that's really how easy it is. Uh, in the metric system or the SI system, which we'll call it in class, it's just a matter of moving decimal points one way or the other. So you need to be able to look up some prefixes. The prefixes in the SI system get um, a little bit more complicated than just centa and kilo, um, but in general, it's just a matter of moving decimal places. No problem.